Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and I'm here with my girlfriends. I've got Stephanie from Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening, and Amy. Amy, Amy, it's been a very long day. I've been recording all day, and we were just talking about all these interviews. Okay. Guys. I'm going to get to <laughs> Amy from Holistic Genie. And of course, I will be putting their links down in the description box below because if you guys have not subscribed to their channels, then you are totally missing out. I know that I'm a researcher, but at the end of the day, these ladies and I have a lot in common when it comes to self-healing and shadow work and working on ourselves. Of course, most people know that's what I did for a living before YouTube. But before we get into that, we were discussing kind of comically, because if you can't laugh at this shit show, you would cry about yeah, everything right. that's going on right now. And I was telling Stephanie today, I feel like my nerves are effing fried. You know, I've been through so much in these last six months and truths are starting to come to light on a very public scale of what I've been through, which has been very validating for me. Um, certain people are being removed that have done terrible things to me, um, awful things to me. Um, and I thought that I would feel better when it came out, but it's made me actually kind of go back into that trauma a little bit. And it's made me kind of have to relive some of that trauma of betrayal. And, um, and I'm great. I'm thankful to everybody who has reached out to me. You guys, obviously you two ladies mean the world to me, but all of our, our friends watching right now mean the world to me too. All the emails of encouragement, even if I don't get a chance to respond to you guys, like, you guys mean so much to me when you send me those. It, it really affects me and it makes me feel so much better um, to know that I'm not alone in this and um, that justice is being served and um, uh, wrongs are being hopefully made right. And I just hope that the innocent, the people that were caught up in the spell casting, were caught up in the turmoil, the innocent will be able to maintain their, their dignity in their lives and know that we love them, even though they got mind scrambled that, I still love them. Um, and so anyway, but with that being said, I mean, so much shit's happening right now. My nerves are fried. I've literally been shaking all day today. Um, where do we start? I mean, we know CERN was turned on, which we'll have to be careful. I'm just going to say that one time, guys. So let's just, just in case, because it's YouTube. So I said the word once. So let's now call it, um, what should we call it? The party plaza? How about the battery? The battery. There we go. Battery. The and and battery. I'll, I'll explain to you scientifically why I call it a battery. So <clears throat> we all think that the white hats have control of it. And if, if they reverse the polarity, it would make sense that all of these nefarious energy collection sites like the GGs and the Hoover Dam and <laughs> these obelisks that are just mysteriously blowing up all over. If, if what <clears throat> if that's the case, not saying that we know for sure, but if CERN's polarity was reversed, it would make sense that all these things are blowing up because when you reverse polarity on a battery, it blows the circuits. It blows it up. So wrongs are being righted. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I know people talked about the Nataraj, which is outside of CERN, which is the Shiva, the fire dance of Shiva as being bad. And that really hurt me that patriots are out there saying that, because I'm going to tell you right now, if you're still under the delusion that these other religions are bad and only Christianity is good, then you're going to have a hard time with this great awakening. Um, because the Nataraj, we, 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 even with the obelisk, we know that the obelisk that were put up for nefarious purposes are going to go, come down. But the ones that were originally used, for um energy heart for for free energy will stay up because they were put up for positive reasons and i was saying this to shanti today off air we were talking about it and i was like what people need to understand especially if we look at this from a purely psychological point of view not just not spiritual just psychological if we look at what narcissists do and we know that all psychopaths are narcissists they do something that's called scorched earth so if the bad guys know that they're losing and they're going to lose, they're going to make sure that we all go down with them. All right. So what do they do? They put out junk conspiracy. They put out disinformation. So they are the ones that put out the information that the obelisk was Osiris's wiener that was put out by the bad guys. So that guess what we would do. 
so that we would take our pitchforks and take them all down. But mm -hmm. what if that's the antenna for Tesla technology? Right. What if that's what our ancestors used in Tartaria to give a, to give free energy, God's energy, but we take them all down. So we have to be really careful. And I saw that with the certain thing with the Nataraj, the Nataraj of, of um, people like, Oh, Shiva is the Lord of death. Well, if you just think Shiva is the Lord of death, then you're really ignorant because that information is out there to research. Shiva is one of the tri heads of, of Hinduism. It's tri head, just like Christianity, uh, Vishnu, Brahma, and Shiva. Shiva is also the deity who meditated for a thousand years. He represents Tamas Guna, which is more of a relaxed Guna, a meditative Guna. Shiva's skin is also blue because he took on all the suffering and pain of humans. So his skin turned blue. So we need to think about that. So if there is a Nataraj outside of the battery, could it be perhaps that the bad guys were trying to manipulate that energy for themselves? And now that the good guys have it in their hands, the proper energies of Shiva can exist. I mean, just, just a thought. And so we, we need to be really careful moving forward with the way these energies are that we're not going to extremities that we're not going it's polarizing completely the opposite direction because that in itself is considered a mental disorder first of all second of all it's not it's going to end up imploding our planet we have to remember that everything has shades of gray all right so yeah so we just have to going forward in these crazy energies and i'm feeling them too guys like i said i've been literally i've been texting all day stephanie like i feel like my nerves are fried right now i mean i feel like they're freaking fried and it's, it's the end of a very long battle. And we just have to be really fair when it comes to all these things that we don't understand yet. And we have to, and we have to have grace and mercy. We have to remember that the Christ is some, something that heals, right? The Antichrist is Antichrist consciousness. The Antichrist is an energy that takes you away from your own self-healing, right? So that's anything from the media to education to the church, anything that's taking you, that's taking that responsibility away from you is the antichrist the christ consciousness is something that's your birthright and but you got to work on that and therefore with all that being said all the energy is going on right now we got to just be we have to we have to walk through this with grace and with mercy and with compassion yeah so yeah, the energies are really like and personally for me like i've had this like and you know bryce because i've been talking with you um when you're texting me about your your nerves being fried i have this sense of like urgency to like go somewhere run somewhere do something but i don't know where i don't know how i don't know why and then like literally i have no motivation to then go ahead and do what i feel like i need to do it's so weird it's like it's like a, i lack motivation but i have so much motivation and i don't know if that's just because i'm an ab blood type <laughs> But like, it's, it's like super, super restless, but then super tired at the same time. So it'd be fascinating to find out if other people are feeling like this too. Like if you do like on my channel, you know, put in the, the comment section, cause I'm interested to see what people are feeling like, but like, I, you know, talking to people in like groups and stuff like that, that I have, it's like, everybody is feeling like this. Something's coming type of feeling like something is happening, but we don't know what something's happening. Am I, am I the only one feeling like this out of the three of us or? No, I, I feel that way too. I, I, <clears throat> I mean, I have some pretty, um, pretty big goals right now. And so I, I've been kind of running myself a little bit ragged, just trying to get everything accomplished that I want to do. Um, but I know exactly what you mean. It's like, hurry up and wait. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. It's exactly. It's the, I, I mean, I've struggled with like feeling like I have so many goals to accomplish and then it overwhelms me. So I just like stop dead in my tracks. This, this isn't even like that. This is like, I, I can't even be in my own body right now. I just want to kind of like run out of my body. 
that kind of a feeling. It's like, um, I, there's no words to really put to it. Like, it's like restless leg syndrome, but my whole body, like I just got to run. <laughs> Your whole body is like an 80 year old man right now. The left of restless leg syndrome. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've, I've had RLS my whole life. Like I've at nighttime as a kid, I try to run up the wall with my legs. Cause it was just like that, like feeling of like something like, I don't, I can't even explain it. Like creepy crawly feeling, but yeah, it's like a creepy crawly feeling. Like I feel like I gotta, I have so much to do and I have so much things to accomplish and I just have to get out of the house and I got to do everything and I got to do this and I got to do that. But it's like, no, I need to sleep. I need to rest. I need to, I have other stuff to, it, I can't even explain it. I really can't. Yeah, I, I've said this on my channel a couple of times about, you know, having complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And there were things that I didn't know were not normal until I actually went through trauma therapy. And one thing that I still have to do, even though I've been through trauma therapy, but once you go through traumas, you still always have like little, it's, it's kind of always still there. You just know how to work with it. And something I have to do at night, speaking of running and jumping up the bed, I have to lock my bedroom door every night I go to bed because I have the propensity to have night terrors, which means I will actually run out of my bed in my sleep. It started when I was in the eighth grade. My mother once found me standing in the shower at two o'clock in the morning with my pajamas on, just standing in the shower. Um, another time, my mother caught me in the garage. In the I was like 14 years old, just in the middle of the night. I had I ran into the garage um, which gives you a little bit of an indication mm -hmm. about what was happening in my life to cause that trauma at that age. And I've worked through that in trauma therapy, but it still happens. And so, and there, even to this day, I'll wake up with a panicky sensation in the middle of the night, not having night tears. I'll literally wake up and, and be like, what do I need to grab? Like, I got to grab something to run. And so I think. Okay. That's, that's the kind of the feeling I'm talking about, Bryce. That's CPTSD. Um, I don't know. I haven't had a good dream. I thought it was normal that people had nightmares every night. I thought that was normal until I went to trauma therapy. Mm -hmm. And, and these are, and, and so when we have these an energies amplified, you know, Sean Stone, the videos I've done with him, he, he speaks so eloquently when he talks about the macro and the micro, the macro and the micro for half of this movement, they're only focused on the macro. And then the other half of us are starting to realize the macro is only a reflection of the micro. Mm -hmm. All the darkness that we've learned about over these last couple of years is only showing us to what our shadow side has to, to offer us to work through and to learn and our triggers. And that's kind of going to be the focus of this video today because I've, I've realized and, and you'll have to forgive me because I've been in this world for 15 years. And so I forget sometimes when I say something or in some type of way that if someone who's not used to this, it might not make sense. So you'll have to, you'll have to ask me to explain further. If there's something I say that that doesn't make sense, just asking the comment section. Um, because in the Western world, I think we've been so conditioned to separate our mind from our body. We know that Ayurveda medicine was is one is the oldest medicine in the world. It's where Chinese medicine comes from. Um, it is allegedly where Western medicine originated. Um, I don't know now based on our talks of Tartaria, who knows now what the true story is. But Western medicine has taken such a giant leap from Ayurveda from natural healing, that they don't even resemble each other anymore. You know, and in the Western medicine, they're just it's petroleum based. Yeah. They don't, they don't teach doctors anything about health, really. They teach them how to write prescriptions and what prescriptions to give people for what symptoms. And, you know, I, I fired my doctor years ago for not sending me to an allergist because I had researched and researched and I knew that I had food allergies and I wanted to know what they were. And she had me on six different medications at the time, and I wasn't getting, getting any better. And I asked to be sent to an allergist, and she refused. And she wanted to put me on a third blood pressure medication. And I don't have high blood pressure. My high blood pressure was because of another medication that I was on. So I fired her. And then I did an elimination diet, because without a referral from my doctor, my insurance wouldn't cover um, allergy testing. So I did an elimination diet to figure it out myself. And I, I lost all respect for Western medicine at that point. 
Have you ever checked your dosha, Emmy? Because I can send you stuff for your dosha too to see. What I you looked it do. up briefly, but I wasn't. I wasn't. Um, very happy with the websites that I did find. And then I'll I I'll send you stuff. I'll okay, send you thank you. Stuff. Yeah, because <laughs> websites sometimes aren't going to give you the full, the full scope. Anyway, yeah. yeah, it's exactly that. And that's the way Western medicine or Eastern philosophy kind of, kind of looks at things. According to Eastern philosophy, there's no such thing as disease. According to Western philosophy, there's no such thing as health issues. If you have something wrong with you, it's your body telling you that there's an imbalance. That's all it's doing. And it's not going to go away until you deal with it. What do we mean by deal with it? You got to do the inner work. You know, um, I should bring Shanti on to part. We could do a follow up on this too, because Shanti uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer from Aquarius Rising Africa. She's talked about this a lot. And when she was diagnosed with breast cancer, she immediately decided she wasn't going to go the Western medicine route because she knew it was her right breast. She knew that went masculine problems. And so she did a deep dive into her energetic, emotional body and she cancer went away. And that's, it's, it's with everything with diabetes, with cancer, with all cancers, with, you know, we're not doctors. I got to put that out there for liability. I'm just saying that when you start to do your own work on yourself, you start, to, it's hard. You know, somebody asked me, what is shadow work? Basically shadow work is having is leaning into the things that make you really uncomfortable. It's and, and find a process too. find a process, find, find a support group, um, look online, how to work through triggers. Um, there's some videos on my channel on how to work through resentments and what trauma bonding and codependency are. You know, there, there are all kinds of things that you can research and, and read about to help yourself. You know, if, if you have any kind of of condition, like Bryce was saying, um, look into doing shadow work. I mean, if you just type in the keyword shadow work, a lot of stuff will, will start to come up. It, it's just, you know, a good, a good way to do it would be to start with an inventory, an inventory of your life, like list off all of the traumatic events that, you, that you've had, list off all of the resentments against people or institutions or places that you have, and then dig into that. You know, um, there's, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. And another thing that's, that is a diagnosis that is given to a lot of people is fibromyalgia. And I'm not saying fibromyalgia isn't real. I experienced it for a Oh, time. I have my own. I can talk about what I think of that because I'll let you finish and then I'll go into my story on that. So I had um, fibromyalgia for a number of years and was on quite a few medications for it. And after a couple of years of being on medication and it wasn't helping me and I just kept getting worse. And then I had uh, symptoms on top of the fibromyalgia from all the medication. Um, you know, I just, that's when I fired my doctor. I was like, there has got to be something else I can do. Like I am not going to live the rest of my life like a cripple. I mean, I couldn't do anything. I literally could not do anything. I, I barely functioned. I barely functioned. We were having money troubles. And my husband at the time said, you know, you're going to have to go get another job. And I was terrified. I was like, I can't barely even get out of bed. There's no way I can do more than what I'm doing. It was, it, it's, it was, it, it was no way to live. And it's absolutely no way to live, but you can heal from it. I don't have any issues with that anymore at all. Occasionally I'll get, you know, a headache, but usually, um, like Bryce and, and Stephanie were saying, if you do the work and listen to your body and try to find the root cause of the headache or whatever it else is that's ailing you, if you try to find the root cause of it, instead of covering it with a bandaid or trying to escape it, you know, it'll go away much faster. Or being addicted to it. People yeah. literally have addictions to their health problems. I think that's another form of trauma bonding. I yeah. was about to say, because you said trauma bonding, and that's a huge one. That's what keeps people in abusive relationships. It's what key, it's like a form of Stockholm syndrome almost. Mm -hmm. um, Stockholm and, syndrome is the worst form of trauma bonding, but there are much, there are many more and they're usually really subtle. Yeah. And when you're in 
the relationship and it doesn't have to be with a partner. It can be with your mom. It can be with a coworker, a boss. It doesn't have to be with a partner. And, you know, you don't even realize that that's what's going on because it's so subtle. And that, and that's the thing with abuse. It can be so subtle that you're like, oh, no, that's that's no big deal. You we know, were just, we were talking about that before you came on. I mean, because that's, that's the big difference between complex post-traumatic stores complex post-traumatic stress disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder. Post-traumatic, from what my trauma therapist explained to me, PTSD, why you see it most of the time in like military people is because it was one event, one big thing happened that caused them to go into a, a trauma response where it changed their, their mental- Like a car accident or yeah. something like that too. Complex post-traumatic stress disorder is harder to diagnose and it's harder to treat because it's layers and layers and layers of subtle abuses. And it usually happens. I always tell people all the time, I would have rather grown up in a home where my dad beat the shit out of us than the mental and emotional crap I went through. Because mm -hmm. that is what, and it took me dating all these really nasty guys to the point where I was in my early thirties and I was engaged to someone and I got strangled one night. And if I, if the dog had not shit on the floor because he was so scared, I probably would have died. Because when the dog crapped on the floor, that's when I was dropped. And I had to call 911. And that sent me, and then I, I went to some therapy after that. But then what happened after that was I was doing second series in Ashtanga Yoga every day in the Shala. And I would start to shake uncontrollably. I would just, my body would start to shake. And the teacher was like, this is a nerve response. Mm -hmm. He made me watch videos of military people shaking the same way. He was like, there's something. And so I went to trauma therapy and it's, and it, I thought it was just going to be about that one X I had, but what ended up happening in trauma therapy is it didn't start with him. I had to go all the way back to my childhood to start to unravel things and go through EMDR therapy. And after that, I now since have not had that type of person in my life because I healed that wound, right? That's the shadow work. But yes, yeah, Stephanie, I know you talked about several, uh, not several palsy, um, fibromyalgia as well. Um, as an, as a, what, what's an immune, it's a, it's an autoimmune disorder, which, what does that mean? What is, what are they? And, and mean? most people don't tell you it's an autoimmune disorder. And actually a lot of doctors don't even believe in the diagnosis. Well, let and me, so well, and well, let's look, talk about that. What does autoimmune mean? Okay. So in Eastern philosophy, in Eastern, not, no autoimmune diseases really exist. Yep. Because autoimmune is your nervous system is attacking itself. Yeah, it's finding something in the, it's almost like it's, it's a foreign object in the body and it's, it's trying to push it out, except it's the nerves. So it's, it's attacking itself. itself. Yep. What does anxiety it, and stress do to you? You attack attacking yourself. Yes, you're attacking yourself. Your nerves are shot. So my theory on fibromyalgia comes from a few different sources. So when I used to room patients for a career as a medical assistant, I said things to patients that I would have gotten fired for. Nothing bad. I, I would literally, you know, for an example, if some if if a doctor was forcing a patient to get a flu um, thingy, yep. Yeah. And in the in the patient was like super against it, I'm like, that's your body don't do it because the doctor's telling you that's your body I, I was very honest um and I had a lot of people say I feel like there's an agenda behind this and I'm like yep <laughs> and and I could have gotten fired for that but that's that's the kind of stuff that I mean but I had a lot of patients come in and they would say how they have fibromyalgia and yada yada and I would say to them how much trauma have you had in your life Mm -hmm. I just knew, oh, well, I was in a car accident. I was in this uh, bad relationship. Yeah, I had child uh, abuse and yada, yada, and that kind of stuff. And I'm like, yep. So then I knew some of the source had to do with trauma. Now, one of my favorite, pa not my patient, but a favorite patient that would come in, she has um, multiple sclerosis, and she actually got off all of and has literally been helping her healing herself. She's a tarot card reader and a psychic medium. 
And she decided she was going to heal herself. And she has baffled doctors because she was told you're going to end up in a wheelchair, and never be able to walk again. Well, she started to train herself using a dog leash on her foot to get herself to continue to walk. She never gave up. She had bad days. She'd have good days. She had bad months. She'd have good months. But she's been training herself to walk again. And she's been healing herself because she is just a very old soul and does not believe in the giving her. And she's also using med um, medicinal. Yeah. You know where I'm going with that. I know, I'm not sure if that's a trigger word on YouTube. So she's healing herself with um, the cannabis. So, <clears throat> but anyways. Well, see, I mean, let's talk about that. But let's, we'll be careful what we say. But so if we look at what the word sorcery means, what's the Greek word for sorcery? Pharmakia, which converts. Where and that's yeah. not pharmakia. That's yet, all natural herbs. Or like herbs and, and mushrooms and all these things. They're I mean, demonized. So he took petroleum and he converted it. He took the, the, the herbs that are healing and he then looked into, well, what about them as healing people? And then took it, twisted it, converted it using petroleum. I did a whole deep dive on, you know, myself, on, which is where you get the Western medicine. And then he demonized, um, you know, herbalist, you know, anywhere and so um that we're standing um up for their their beliefs in in herbalistic treatments right which is what god made god made exactly that yep so anyways this patient came in one day and she goes you understand that your fibromyalgia diagnosis because you're an empath and have gone through severe trauma and that you're holding on to that energy and all of your fascia, your muscle, your bones, and your soft tissue in your body. And I said, holy shit. Oh, my God, you're correct. It just like, duh, you know. So my thing is, with a diagnosis like that, where your body's literally attacking itself, and it does. And I'm, this is what pulled me out of work is my, that diagnosis. I got so freaking sick, and I couldn't function at work. Kind of like you, I mean, you couldn't get out of bed. It got to the point where I was driving to work every morning, trying to rush to work because I was waking up so late, which is unlike me. I'm a morning girl. I, I wake up easily in the morning and I was bawling my eyes out for two weeks straight before I finally could not literally get out of bed. Like I, but it's like God used that in a good way to get out of my job. So it, it was a blessing. Um, even though I struggled a little bit right after and everything. And I went through a lot of hardship, you know, financially after that. But in terms of fibromyalgia, it's literally trapped energy. Yeah. That's that is all, making your is. body attack itself. It's trapped energy. Di diabetes is trapped energy. Heart disease is trapped energy. It's all, it's just trapped energy that needs to be transmuted. And so why does certain energy go to certain places and create certain issues? That depends on what the energy is, is focused around. So if you look at heart issues, you know, it's from the very simplest of forms. Like when I work with students who have had a lot of heartache, which is me too, what a heartbreak, betrayal, they do this. They're hiding it. They're hiding their heart because it's been hurt so much. And so my job isn't to help them open it. So if there's fears around survival, around money, around that's going to be a, a root chakra, a muladhara issue. So you're going to see weight around that area, possibly. You're going to have lower back pain. How many doctors, if you, if you have lower back pain, which is common, how many doctors have said, oh, are you afraid of being homeless? Are you afraid that you don't have enough to be on this earth? Instead of saying, here's some more pills, here's a steroid injection. Yep. So that's what the shadow work is. And again, as Emmy said there, and, and I have the same thing with um, arthritis. I, in my early thirties was having such a problem with arthritis. I was like an 80 year old woman and I was on a medication and I would have to go in every six months and have my blood taken so they could check my kidneys, which tells you that that, that was terrible for my kidneys. Um, 
And when lockdown happened, I couldn't get more medication that forced me to go through healing for my arthritis. And guess what? I haven't had a flare up since. I hardly ever have a flare up. And what I want to say too, is when we're talking about ways to do shadow work and to work through this energy and transmute it, I learned this from you, Bryce. I'm not going to take the credit because I learned all of this from you. And I'm learning it firsthand. And I think, Emmy, you're starting to do this yourself is working out. Yeah, I was going to go to that next because what is a great way? So if we look back at a lot of these old religions, like the priestess, the priest and priesthood of Isis, these old Eastern religions, they had mandatory exercises that they did. Mandatory. Why? Mm-hmm. They weren't trying to look good in a bathing suit. Mm-hmm. Because the body holds information. And so when we put our body into an uncomfortable position and we start to move the joints in different ways. So again, when we look at things like the Muladhara, Mulabunda, they do that a lot in bar where they're having you literally pull your pelvis in. You are unsticking things or they have you move the pelvis. You're starting to unstick things and, and being able to push the pelvis forward is also forcing you consciously or subconsciously to strengthen your perineum, which is the root of your Shashumna. What is Shashumna? Shashudam, Shashumna is the sacred channel that runs up your spine that carries your Christ consciousness, otherwise known as Kundalini. Kundalini is not bad. It is Christ consciousness. And what happens is when we are holding on to our work, to our karma, that's all karma means is work, our chakra points in the body, these cycles, they don't stop. They either get really weak or they overspend. And so the, this, this, these windmills of, of energy can't quite get things to run up that shashuna. Now, if our perineum is weak too, guess what happens? We lose energy. It just comes right out of us, right? And so these exercises, like these ancient exercises, like yoga, and I think Bar does a really good job with this, um, even though it's a newer thing, work on essentially you finding these pockets of information within your body that are going to release knowledge. So what does that mean? That means that when information comes up, you might feel all of a sudden like you're going to cry. You might feel like you want to run. Yep. You might feel like you just want to start p- cracking up laughing sometimes. Yep. So sometimes that information. <laughs> I that was through up, <laughs> I, listen, I still, and it's never ending. I still go through it. Sometimes that information comes up and, and you're not going to actually have the story. You're not going to know, remember the, the action that happened to cause that emotional attachment. That's not important. What's important is that feeling. Oh my God. Why am I sad? That's betrayal. Why do I feel like I'm going to be betrayed? And you start. It's always the same movements to that. Because one time is not going to bring all of it up at once. So it's like specifically with the pelvic tuck stuff, that's when I'll start to cry. Then there's other different movements where I might feel like really happy or, um, I, I might get super depressed all of a sudden it goes away. I mean, it's not, it doesn't stay there, but, and, and I just, I acknowledge it when it comes up and if I have to cry, I just let it come out. I know I'm not working out in front of anybody, except that one time where we were in DC with very, very little space doing our workout before we went on our little gallivanting day. Um, and I said, no, you can cry. You can have snot coming out of your nose. Listen, I've been farted on multiple times. <laughs> I have had bodily functions, fluids fall on me from students. Listen, I've seen grown men cry. It's you, you can. I, I think I'd be fine crying in front of you. I just, I wasn't, I, it doesn't happen every single time I work out. No, it won't. I notice it tends to happen after maybe I had a rough night or. Maybe I, I ate something the night before that probably was not good for me because that's also energy. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm start, I've noticed things that I do or ingest or let's say I had um, a beer the night before. I don't drink a whole lot of alcohol, but I, I will have like 
um, beer, like wine with my dinner sometimes, uh, maybe a couple times a week. And if let's say I drank the alcohol when I was not in such a good mood, like I'm, I'm a happy, I don't get drunk, but if I do get tipsy, I'm happy usually, unless, unless I drink vodka. And then it's like, I literally have reruns of like all the terrible things I've ever done in my life and decisions I made throw up a few times and hug the toilet waking up after blacking out, which has not happened in about 10 years. Thank God. Thank God. I recognize that. So anyways, if I do 10, cause that's a lower vibrational thing you're ingesting. Now, if I do something like that, like the next day in doing my workout, I might notice that I'm a little bit more on the more emotional side because I'm maybe releasing that energy that maybe that last night triggered and stuff like that. So I, I'm, I'm gauging like different things that I'm, I'm recognizing. I'm recognizing how my body works. I'm recognizing how my body responds to things, different triggers. And instead of running from it, I kind of just work with it. You know what I mean? I kinda, it. It's for your, it's in your autonomy. And you yeah. have to, and I want to get to something because Emmy, you've had some experiences too, but you get to the point too. What's really important as well. We have <clears> something <throat> in the yoga practice called tapas, not the appetizer tapas. It's heat. And so this is why it's super important. So like if you're doing a yoga practice, that's why it's su super important to sweat because the sweat is what's moving and flushing the energy out, right? It's what's flushing through the muscles. So not, not only is it physically flushing toxins out of your body, but it's also taking when you're triggering that muscle, you're triggering that energy cycle through whatever exercise you're doing, the blood and the sweat that's pumping through your body is then going to come through and it's going to pick up that energy and then move it and present it to you. So if you're going to a yoga class and you're not sweating, you're not doing yoga, right? You have to sweat. And you picked up something, too. I know, Emmy, you've been doing um, Ashtanga. So you've been doing the same sequencing every day. And it, that's extremely important in traditional yoga. I don't know where it came from that people would do different classes every day. If you're doing a different class every day, you're just skimming the surface, right? Because the more you do these postures and you put these different shapes, the deeper your body is going to drop into the postures, the more it opens and the more information is going to start to come out. And what you talked about, Stephanie, is called autonomy. So part of the healing work that we do is we start to gain autonomy over ourselves. We start to recognize our own patterns. We start to recognize. So I, this morning when I got up and I started my, my practice, I was really tight and I'm not a tight person. You know, it, that's not, I've been doing this for 15 years, but I know now that when I wake up and my body feels tight, that means that I'm depressed. I'm mm -hmm. sad. Okay. Okay. Cause I've been really, um, I've been really tight the last few days and I just, I've had some stuff coming up because I am taking a class and I have these goals that are so far out of my comfort zone and shit's getting real. And it's like, oh my God. And also something you said, Bryce, um, that when you have a C-section, sometimes when you begin a yoga practice, you can finish the birth. That happened to me also. My, my, yeah. mens my last menstrual cycle lasted 10 days. It was the worst I have ever felt. The cramps felt like contractions. The bleeding was so heavy. And I cried every single day. Yeah. And wow. You know, when it came to mind, I, I, I was like, why? Why is this happening? Like, what is going on? And then I was doing yoga that day. And what you said in a video, I don't remember what video it was. It was like, I don't know, within the last couple months. Um, you said that women who have C sections sometimes you know, they'll have, it, it's a, it's a birth trauma. Having a C-section is mm -hmm. trauma. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it was um, a good experience or not. That is a very unnatural way to have a baby. And yes, it does save lives. I'm, I'm not, you know, knocking C-section. Sometimes they're, they're absolutely necessary, but it is a trauma and your, your body is, is stunted. The birth process is stunted and it affects everything. It affected my hormones. It affected my milk supply. Like it took so much longer for my milk to come in. Um, and then I didn't produce as much as I did with my other children. And, you know, it, 
C-sections just really, really affect a woman. And we just don't know. Yeah. Cause they don't, don't know but this. It's, it, but it makes so much sense, right? Like, yeah, anytime from what I know, I know as, as a teacher, anytime, and I've had multiple operations myself. So I, anytime you cut open the body, you are then technically considered a trauma patient because the body has been cut open now. And multiple times I have a big scar going across my stomach. because I had my appendix out when I was 12 at that point. I know that with the new medicine, we're not going to have to do that stuff, but that saved my life at that point. So it was the lesser of two evils. And I'm entirely grateful to the surgeon who took out my appendix because he saved my life. But yes. Yeah, so when you, if you have to have a C-section in that moment, it's what has to be done to save your life and the baby's life. So it had to be done. But what they don't prepare you for is that because your body didn't get to finish what it started, it's going to hold that energy. And when we do this shadow work, when we start to work in the body again, the body then goes whoosh and just releases it. Do Does you, this apply to for miscarriages? I don't know. I've never heard miscarriages brought up with finishing. I guess it depends on at what point the baby. I'm talking like late term. Unless they delivered. Do some women deliver? Yeah, some actually, you know, yeah, now that you say that, that they, some people do have to deliver. And then um, if it's early on, you might need to get a DNC so they scrape out everything. I don't know that I would have to look into that, but I'm, sh I'm sure that's true. I mean, that's emotional trauma. I knew somebody who had a stillborn and it took them a long time. Oh, I can't even imagine. Do. I can't they even had imagine. To deliver. They had to deliver. So I, I know that that was, it was very traumatic and it took a long time before she was even willing to try again for another child. They now have two healthy children, but um, you know, so I'm, I'm sure that that is incredible trauma that I would definitely suggest seeing a good trauma therapist for that, because that is intense stuff that you need to work through, you know, um, for sure. But I will say too, so, so what starts to happen is we start to experience these sensations in our practices and in our workouts. And when, when I talk about working out for shadow work, I want to be very clear because I've had people ask about this kind of stuff. You have to pick an exercise that's going to force you to be in your body. So if you're doing something like gardening, playing in the pool with your friends, yes, technically you're exercising, but you're escaping because your mind is focused on something else. You need to do something that's gonna force you into your body. It's gonna force you to feel the sensations of your body, you know, like the bar, like the yoga, like running. If you're swimming like let laps, that's great because it's gonna force you into yourself. So I would suggest, and that's, that's the thing about shadow work too, is what's the first thing we wanna do when that trigger comes up? We wanna escape, mm -hmm. it's uncomfortable. Right. So we have to do something that's going to force us to acknowledge that. And that's what I do even to this day. Listen, people say to me all the time, they're like, I tried exercising. I didn't like it. <laughs> I, like so. I don't like it. Listen, I I've done this for 15 <laughs> fucking years. You think I like it? You think I, every day, every single day I wake up and I think, oh, should I just sleep in every single day? But I'm disciplined. And I get on my mat and I do it. I don't like it half the time. I didn't like it this morning. I was miserable this morning, but I did it. That was me yesterday morning. And I was super, like, you guys are talking about muscle tightness. Oh, my gosh. Like, same, same. And I've been feeling very miserable the last couple of days with the, with the energy. So, and yesterday, I literally wanted to just stop off. I did everything I could for 20 minutes to avoid working out. I'm like, I got to get the dog's water. I got to take her out again. Oh, shoot. I got to pee now. Um, no, my hair. I don't like the way my hair is right now. I'm going to redo it because who the hell cares if I'm working out? It's going to look like I'm a freaking lion anyways, you know, by the time yeah. I'm done because I'm sweating so much and I got frizzy freaking hair. Everybody um, gets Albert Einstein hair. Everybody gets yeah. Albert Einstein hair. I mean, it was like anything that, and I wasn't doing it intentionally either. But what I will say is, after a few times of saying, oh, I got to get this done. I got to do this. I got to, I'm like, oh my God, why am I avoiding working out today? Why? I recognized it. So I was actually impressed. I recognized it because normally, see, I wake up at 4:35 o'clock every morning. I would say five days a week at this point, I'm working out and I just put my workout clothes on and I just do it after I take the dog out and feed my dog. That's actually a huge motivation is my dog is part husky and Huskies like to wake up early. And if you don't wake up, they start to howl at you. 
<laughs> okay. So I have I have a back talker. She likes to back talk me. She made a soul contract with the girl to get your ass out of bed in the morning. She did. <laughs> she did. She certainly did. And so I have to take her out and you have to feed her right away because she's like looking at you like, but mommy, I'm hungry. I'm like, fine, I'll freaking feed you instead of feeding you an hour from now. Just okay. Because she loves her food. As Bryce knows, she loves doesn't she love her food, Bryce? She saw our camera tonight. Like she was like, oh, my food. <laughs> so, I mean, that's my motivation to wake up. It's one of the things that, you know, forces me out of bed. But even so, um, normally I just wake up, put my, my workout clothes, and I, I just I just do it. Well, yesterday morning, it was just like, no, we're not. But no, yes, we are. No, we're not. It was like this internal battle I had with myself. But I recognized, why am I avoiding this? And I have been miserable all week. I've been on edge. I've been like, I've had to kind of face a few things that I don't want to face. And, you know, um, yeah, it's just one of those things. So no one likes exercise. I will say this, I feel very lost on the days I don't exercise and I feel very clear minded. I didn't work out this morning because today was my day off. It was just my day off. So I let myself sleep in a little bit, not too, too late because I actually feel sick if I sleep in too, too late. I only need four or five hours of sleep to function for my body anyhow. And um, eight hours is way too much for me. Um, but um, what was I going to say? So Oh my God, I was going to say something really important. I totally forgot what it was. Well, um, I'll say too, while you, well, you brought up a good point. So like, you know, if you do recognize certain things, like today I recognized, I didn't want to, it took me a while to get on my mat too. And I realized I'm really tight. Oh my God, I am depressed. Because sometimes sadness, we can mask sadness. We can busy ourselves to convince ourselves we're fine. Yeah. It's like that episode from friends where he's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. You know? And so what did I do when I was done with my practice and I was in my resting position? I, I actually had compassion for myself and I sat there and I said, listen, your trauma that you went through these past six months that was awful was public and it's coming up again in a very public way. And that's what you're feeling right now. And it's okay because it was hard. And it's okay, but justice is here. It's okay if you're a little tight. It's okay, right? So when you feel these things come up, you don't have to get mad at yourself. You don't have to punish yourself for being a fucking human being. Like this is this is the human condition. We're, we're gonna be dealing with this until the day we die. And I also said something to you, one thing, Stephanie, that is big in the, the, the spiritual world that we see a lot is this idea of toxic positivity which I think we've all had a taste of in toxic. So if you feel the need to cry, if you feel the need to mourn, that is a part of the grieving process and you need to allow yourself that time. I know you said something, Stephanie, about your childhood. My childhood, I was told to cowgirl up, you know, just to hold it in. Mm -hmm. But what does that happen when you hold it in and you go, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You push it down and it starts to build up and then it becomes fibromyalgia, yeah. it becomes cancer. It becomes, you yeah. know, um, and toxic positivity. We see that a lot with MLMs. We see that a lot with a lot of um, where you just have to think positive. Yeah. Like I was told, uh, you know, stop with the crocodile tears, like stuff like that. And then when I was in a relationship with my son's father, which was a very narcissistic relationship. Um, I was called a sniveling, pathetic little C U N T. Oh, I've been called that before too, girl. High five. <laughs> or um, a lazy B I T C H on repeat. And so, guess what happened? I started coming up with this mentality that, you no, know, I'm tough. I'm tough. I'm tough. I don't cry. I'm tough. And literally, I'd get bitch mentality, meaning, I just was tough as nails and nothing was coming through me. So I built a lovely little brick wall around myself and I could be the nicest person or I could snap and be the nastiest person. So it can't alter your personality um, until you address it really. Um, and the other thing I wanted to bring up um, regarding the, you actually kind of made me think about something this morning when we were talking, because you know, you confide in me about 
a lot of your emotions and I probably do the same thing myself. And so what happens is I think sometimes I feel like as an empath, I got to constantly make that person feel better and be positive and be positive and, and feel better. And then that, that also sucks that energy out of that person too. Mm -hmm. Whereas I should just say, no, Bryce, it's okay. Why don't you go have a good cry? Which is actually what you say to me. It's like, yeah. go cry it out, girl. Go cry it out. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not used to being told that. So it's like weird for me to hear somebody actually give me permission to go and yeah. cry it out. And part of that is validating. Like, yeah. Like, like you, and you have to do that to yourself too. That's what I was saying on myself. Like, be like, yeah, what you went through fucking sucks. And you did not deserve to have your natal start chart stolen. You did not deserve to have this happen to you, but it did. And you dealt with it the best that you could. And yes, you're going to have, you're going to have side effects emotionally. You're not, you're not a psychopath. You do have feelings. You do have a tender heart. And so you were betrayed. You were betrayed and that hurts. And you have to mourn that and you have to grieve that. And when these, these emotions come up, like we'll take betrayal, for example, the reason why it hurts so much is because you love the person who did it to you. You still love that person. It's not an easy shut off. Right. And so you have to be able to give yourself. And sometimes that is part of the healing. My, my trauma therapist would do that to me. She was like, yeah, your dad was kind of an asshole to you as a kid, wasn't he? And to have that validation, to have someone. And that say, makes a huge difference. Because Holy shit. Yeah. It's like growing up too. I remember I, I, um, I don't know if this person watches. I highly doubt it because, I mean, there's so many YouTube channels out there and I haven't talked to this person. I had a boyfriend in high school who um, is a very good guy. Still to this day, I would probably say a very good person. Um, not toxic at all. Just a genuine good person. Um, and the only Michael that I knew that wasn't a troublemaker in my life, because Michaels are normally troublemakers. <laughs> And, um, <laughs> so, and I remember him always validating how I was treated by a certain family member. Now I'm not going to say who this family member was, uh, or is, but, um, I remember him always saying, Stephanie, why does so-and-so treat you like this? And I would be like, no, no, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Like, it's trauma bonding. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, and I'd be in such denial. Now, I had pushed it down, pushed it down, pushed it down for a long period of time. He wasn't the only person that had brought this up to my attention. It wasn't until I had gotten married um, that, um, you know, I was told, you know, David would say, um, you're going to stick up for yourself? I'm like, what are you talking about? well, so-and-so is really not treating you very well. And I'm like, well, she, I would make excuses after excuse, after excuse, after excuse. And it wasn't until the last couple of years when um, a certain um, uh, type of uh, treatment came out. You guys know where I'm going with that. Um, and I got alienated from the family um, about my belief system, about, uh, both medical and political stuff. Okay. Um, and literally alienated. I, I have not talked to my family in about, um, a year and a half and I haven't seen him in just about three years because of this whole situation, this situation. Um, and I started to recognize it and like that, that's where my shadow work started. So when I work out sometimes I literally get this horrific anger that comes out of me when I'm doing anything to do with the legs. That's where it's you told girl. me anger is in the thighs. And I was doing thigh work at the time. And I wanted to punch a flipping wall. And I mean, I have all these emotions coming out and some stuff I don't remember. I don't, I recognize the, Sometimes I can recognize the energy and link it to the memory, but a lot of times I can't. That's not and like important. you said, Bryce, you don't necessarily have to remember the memory. It's just the energy coming up and, and just uh, sitting in it and, and, and allowing it to transmute itself and, and do what it needs to do to release itself out of you. Um, but it, there's been a lot of denial in my life about everything and just pushing things down, pushing things down, trying to be the tough one and trying to not like, 
no man is going to do this to me and no nobody in my life can say this or like I became this really hard and tough person and like I told you Bryce I don't cry in front of people because it's embarrassing well why you're like well where does that come from why what's the root of the problem and, it, and then I started to recognize like literally like I felt like when I cried as a kid I would get made fun and we're told I'm just crying crocodile tears and I get very insecure and so I mean there's a lot of digging that goes with shadow work. There's a, a lot of times it's not just one root problem. There's a like layers upon layers upon layers. Yeah. So I had a lot of uh, abdominal surgeries and this was uh, way before I knew about the chakra system and energy work. And there was this one particular uh, traumatic event that happened. I was pregnant with my fifth baby, a girl, and I got up in the middle of the night and caught my husband at the time with my sister. And then several months later, let's see, that happened in October. By February, January, January or February, I ended up getting appendicitis. And I had to have my appendix out while I was pregnant. That's very and, dangerous. Yeah. I had, you know, and... I, looking back now, I realized that that was a fast track manifestation in my physical body of what had happened to me. And my next pregnancy, um, I had another traumatic experience with that same ex-husband and um, I ended up getting really, really sick and I was hospitalized. They could not figure out what was wrong with me. I, I ended up on TPN, which is... Um, Stephanie, you probably know what that is. It's what they give cancer patients when they can't eat because so I couldn't eat. And the baby's movements was, uh, were slowing down and they were concerned about nutrition. And uh, so I was in the hospital for a couple of weeks and they finally um, decided to send me down to um, have a CT scan with contrast dye while I was pregnant. But th they were at a complete loss. They had no idea what was going on. Well, it turns out I had about 25 gallstones and they, and one was lodged in my bile duct and, you know, they, they couldn't do gallbladder surgery while I was pregnant then. Um, so they put me on a bunch of medication to control the symptoms until, um, the baby was, um, mature enough to be able to induce labor. And then a week after I had her, I had gallbladder surgery, but it just, it really goes to show that traumatic events will either quickly or sometime down the road wind up causing a physical issue, usually in the area of the chakra that was traumatized. Yep. That's why it's so important to study the chakra system. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'll put a link under this video to Eastern Body, Western Mind. That to me is one of the best starting points. That's my next book I'm reading. <laughs> and it's good because she, she breaks it up in a chapter. So it's not like you have to like read it all the way through you can work on one for a while and try to understand it to understand yeah. what these energy cycles are because once you start that's when you start to get it and then you combine the exercise with it and you know and we do have to understand though at the end of the day talking about eastern philosophy in our lives everything we go through we agreed to go through it yeah and when you accept that first you're like why would i do it when you accept that it becomes a power move your soul has no ego when it's just a soul too, before it takes form into a vehicle such as the, the body. Um, so when you're in the spirit realm, before you incarnate, you, the ego is not involved in your decision making. <laughs> and then you come here and you're like, can I have more mission, please? You know? <laughs> so, I mean, but, but I like that you brought that up because the thing to me is like, let's say we lose um, a parent in a horrific way or we go through some sort of trauma, or um, I don't know, whatever uh, happens to us in our life, instead of this this uh, feeling that the powers that be would like us to feel is this, this guilt that we oftentimes have and hang on to, or this dread, or this um, all these uh, very negative emotions that we hold on to because of maybe certain decisions we've made or a certain trauma that has happened to us, it's liberating to understand our soul decided this before we incarnated 
and it gives you a different way of perceiving um, how to address it or just just a different perception as um, well it's, 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 you're not the victim anymore exactly and that's the thing we really need to get out of too is victim mentality because that keeps us locked and held in a prison that has no bars it's called your mind and um, even if you were the victim in a situation like our ape and stuff like that again you decided to go through it mm -hmm. yep so i mean it 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 starts to make you have a different perception in it and then liberates you so you can start your journey of healing. It, and it's really liberating. Um, and this to shit's not going to go away. I mean, no. that's my one thing my trauma therapist spoke to me too about, about past, she was into the past life. She goes, you're probably also carrying things over from a past life. So those are those emotions. Sometimes you don't know where they come from, but you got to deal with them because it's going to snowball into the next life too. It's not going to go away until you deal with it. And what happens too, you know, in the Quan Yin reading I just released uh, this week, she talks a lot about how, you know, hurt people hurt other people. People who have not dealt with their wounds will then hurt others unintentionally in a reaction to their own pain. I know that through energetic body projections, what it's called. And so when we start to actually work through our own suffering, and our own pain, what tends to happen too, is we start to develop more compassion for other people. So instead of using our pain and projecting on others, we actually transmute that and it turns into compassion. It mm -hmm. turns into empathy. You know, we look at things like betrayal again, like what you went through, Emmy, girl, I would have been gone. Yeah, that, I that, would have been a, that would have been a scorched earth for me, but I don't tolerate any type of cheating. Like that's a boundary for me. But, um, but that with your, I mean, good God, girl, and you said that my heart like broke for you, like, holy shit. Yeah, mine too. But, um, but you know, but there's other, there's other, you know, every, every situation is different. Any uh, situation ship that you're in with people is different. And when in some betrayals, there can be healing. But if you're going to forgive, the, if there's forgiveness for the person who betrayed you, guess what? You have to heal yourself first in order for that forgiveness to actually be there. Because you have to heal that wound within you that was opened for that betrayal. That's what I'm working on right now is, is I was massively betrayed. And now I have to heal that. I have to if I want to move forward, right? So that's something we all have to work on. It doesn't happen overnight. And it's not going to happen literally either. It's going to happen in cycles. Some days you're going to feel like you're good. You got this. And the next day you're going to feel like you were hit by a Mack truck again. And, you're, and I have anger with a lot of things. And I know a lot of therapists will tell you to get a dog bed without the dog in it, just an empty dog bed and like a plastic baseball bat and just smack away just to get that energy out. Because that energy of anger is very bag punching bag yes punching bag but even magdalene my girl magdalene she's always got to make an appearance someone does, does not want me to say her name holy shit magdalene yes the divine feminine christ i know who doesn't want me saying her name because you want people to believe she's here in a man's body and she's not she's right behind me anyway in her gospel she talks about the wisdom of the wrathful person well what's the wisdom there She's not talking about getting pissed off and going eight ship on somebody and being violent. She's talking about taking that anger, working through it, transmuting it for positive change. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be angry. It's a human emotion that God gave us. It's what we're doing with it. Yeah. Are yeah. you using that anger to hurt others and to hurt yourself and to, uh, run away from trauma and stuff like that? Or are you taking it and using it to um, help yourself, help, help yourself and help others because you've transmuted that energy productively. It's okay to be angry. And I, I've seen so many times parents tell, and I, I'm a victim, I'm not a victim. I'm guilty of this too. Don't be angry. You need to stop being angry toward, toward your children. And the thing is, that's not healthy because the kids need to understand it's okay to be angry. So what I've told my son now is it's okay to be angry, but what are you doing with it? Yeah, It's okay because it's an emotion coming up. There's a reason for the emotion. Let's figure this out. Now, granted, he's a teenager, so he doesn't want to listen to me when it comes to any of this, what he calls hubujubu stuff. 
But anyway, yeah, I, I can't get away from it in this house. Okay. I just can't get away from it. I try to, anytime I talk about anything, Eastern philosophy of anything that I've learned from Bryce here, it's, I'm not listening to the hoo-boo jubu stuff. I'm like, um, it's Western literally attitude, not hoo-boo jubu stuff. If we're and talking hoo-boo jubu stuff, we're talking tarot card hoo-boo jubu stuff. That's in the, but the West, that's that Western mentality, which is what got us into the position we're in with these controllers. Anyway, it's this idea that this was crazy, mystical, weird shit. And that's what got us under the thumb of the cabal because we were that, that information was stolen from us. And it's so valuable. It's, I come from a lineage of doctors, y'all. I could, my chemistry teacher would make fun of me because I wouldn't get it in high school because I hated science. Oh, there's Abby. And, um, and he'd be like, aren't you a Bryce? Like, that's my mom's family. Aren't you like the granddaughter of all these like famous doctors? And I'm like, yeah, but I like English and philosophy. <laughs> she, she French kids. She wanted to make an appearance. <laughs> um, and I will tell you right now, in all confidence, in my opinion, I'm grateful to my ancestors who were doctors because that afforded me a wonderful life as a child. However, I feel like I know more about the body because of my studies in India. I studied medicine not as a doctor, but I studied as a medical assistant, which is just a under glorified, underpaid LPN, pretty much um, licensed practitioner, licensed practical nurse. Okay, um, do the similar thing. <coughs> I feel like I, I know more. I feel like yeah. I feel because like, it makes sense. It's common sense. If it's yeah, God didn't create things complicated. It's, it's just like, I take what I learned in school. Now, I, I love the body, um, learning about the body. That's just something that I really um, learned very easily, like anatomy. Um, what, I, what I just didn't understand was, um, pharma I understood pharmacology, but I disagreed with pharmacology, and I always have. Um, I always thought that, you know, you should take a, a non-natural herb or supplement well over a, pharma a pharmaceutical, and that's something I always disagreed with with that particular world, but learning what I did know and, and actually, um, you know, learning it very fast being as I was never a, a school person. I did terrible in high school and middle school. And, but when I went to medical assistant school, I, I got straight A's. Um, now what I know from learning from reading or what you've taught me, Bryce, um, I'm, I felt like, okay, this is a totally different world completely. Now it, it does help. I know anatomy. So I can take that kind of stuff with me. Like I understand where certain organs of the body, you know, the different bones of the body, the different muscles, the different parts of the fascia and stuff like that. Um, but now what I'm doing is I'm taking the information I know from that world and converting it into now learning, okay, how do I heal this part of the, my body? So if, so for instance, I'm just going to use this as an example, like I've, had issues with my hair falling out of my head for years on and off, especially during a significant weight loss or hormonal problems. Um, so I need to, that's something I'm still trying to work on. Why? What, what's the root cause of it? What is my body trying to tell me? We were actually just talking about that off camera before you even came on at me. Um, or like I had um, my left shoulder pops out a lot, especially in my sleep. And Bryce, you had mentioned that's the dad's no, daddy left, issues. Left is mommy issues. No, this was the right side. Yeah. Right side is daddy issues. So daddy, daddy issues. Well, my father passed away. My biological father passed away when I was four and a half. So that's like an abandonment. Yeah. You know what I mean, so, you know, it's like once you start to realize there's certain things that are connected to certain emotions physically in the body, it starts to all make sense. It's like a puzzle piece that you're putting together. And I'll say it gets even more complicated. Emmy and I, we shared this. You text me and I told you something to consider because this is something I was told in India from my Ayurvedic doctor. Because I typically have left issue, issues with my left side. My left hip's really screwed up. Um, and so I was going to an Ayurvedic doctor, getting acupuncture. I was thinking it was my feminine side. And the Ayurvedic doctor I was working with said, actually, I'm picking up that the energy is coming from you know, the right side. The reason why your left side is in so much pain is because your left side is overcompensating for the damage in your right side. Okay, interesting. So when I was 15 years old, I had a double whammy um, trauma with my father. Um, I was 15. It was, it was probably right after my birthday that he left. 
So it'd be March of 1993, I think. Same thing happened to me. My dad. Yeah. Yeah. And he didn't, when he left, he didn't just leave the house. He disappeared. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see or hear from him for six years. And then that summer after he left, um, I I had my first boyfriend. And he bet his mom a year's worth of car insurance that he could take my virginity. So he, and because those two things happened within very close succession and my dad was, he was one of the, those kind of people that children are to be seen and not heard. So I didn't have much of a voice growing up. And when I was, a pillow was held over my face, so I couldn't talk. And because that's around the throat chakra, later on that winter, the December of 93, um, I ended up having my tonsils out. My tonsils got so sick. They were so filled with strep bacteria that even a month long course of antibiotics wouldn't take care of it. And when the doctor took my tonsils out, he said he cut into them and the inside of them was like Swiss cheese. And I didn't, I mean, looking back, hindsight's 2020, looking back on all the trauma I've experienced, I have had almost every single time I've had a major trauma, I have had something happen in my body that caused a severely diseased or severely ill organ that needed to be removed. It's like crazy, crazy how quickly it manifested too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Especially when we're that young, because at that age, your seventh chakra hasn't even developed yet. It's still in the developing process. God. Yeah. And so the power then, and this is what Shanti says, it's to turn around to look at that incident and say, thank you. What were you trying to teach me? What do I need to learn from you from an incident with the hair issue? It's like Shanti's, I learned this from Shanti. And it's the same thing. The same thing I teach. She just has a more eloquent way of saying it. Saying to your hair, okay, I acknowledge this is happening. What are you trying to tell me? What do you need to tell me? And then let the answers come. Um, she was telling a story where she had gotten broken into and the guy had a rock over her head, but she moved and chased, she chased him out. She stepped on broken glass, bleeding foot. And immediately, immediately she was like, thank you. What are you trying to teach me? You know, immediately she went into that mindset of like, instead of saying, God damn it, like, you know, crying and get angry. She, thank you. What are you trying to teach me in this moment? What do I, what do I need to see in this moment? That's awesome. I, I know. I, I, said have that, that. I said that to myself today. I, I've hurt my fingers today, like four or five times. I'm like, okay, what is, what is, what am I being told here? I haven't investigated into it yet, but something's going on. I've hurt my finger five times today. Not the same one, but you know, what, what is the spiritual significance of fingers? You know, I, I don't know. I haven't looked at it. They're part of the heart chakra coming through the palm. Connecting the heart. So, but that's, and that's where only work you can do, right? Like nobody, if you ever go to trauma therapy, that's what they do. They ask you questions, they validate you, but they get you to answer the questions. And so if for people, cause I know we've been going over an hour now, so we'll start to wrap it up. But for those people who are asking about shadow work, the first thing you need to do is lean into your pain, mm-hmm. lean into it. You don't have to jump in head first and swim deep down to the deep end. Just start to lean into it. Journal, start to pay attention. Start to work out if you're not. I know if you don't say I don't like it, none of us like it. None of us like it. Just do it. Just do it first thing in the morning before your ego kicks in. 30 minutes. Do a do a bar class. They're fun. Well, they're not that fun. But <laughs> um, are you sure about that, Bryce? I mean, I do like the hip hop one. I really, really like that. I like that. the teacher. The teacher's Until great. Until it gets to the legs. Once we're at the legs, I'm a little angry. <laughs> I mean, I call I, I carry a lot of tension on my neck. Now yeah. I know for a fact, as I would, I get spiritually attacked, attacked too. That's a whole other trauma that I do have spirits that try to hook onto my neck. I do know that. Yeah, I was saying, again. actually, Emmy, actually, Emmy removed one off of my neck one time when her Reiki healing. Well, I was going to say too, 
well, with my neck issues, I know it's other stuff. But it's also the stress of what's going on that I have to now work on. But in me too, that Reiki, and, and that's the thing about Reiki, and any type of spiritual healing, guys, you can't go to a Reiki practitioner or yoga teacher and just expect to be like the bitty bobbity boop and done. Yeah. You actually have to continue work. You have to meet the practitioner halfway. In my readings, I tell people that. Well, I went and I had this done. And I'm like, so what are you doing every single day to continue to heal? Well, nothing. Okay, that's your problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's your problem. You like zap your hips and all of a sudden it's all done. No, because if you don't deal with the issue that got your hips stuck in the first place, it's just going to come back. Yeah. yeah. Right? So The all answers these, are within you. Yes. All these modalities of healing are just tools because at the end of the day, you're the one that has to be the alchemist. You're the one that has to transmute that energy. That en energy was given to you. And that energy, believe it or not, is a gift for you to transmute. Well, that's what I like about, you know, I've had Reiki done before, but Emmy did something I've never heard from somebody. And you, before you even started on me, you said, I'm just the conduit. You're actually the one healing yourself. Yep. And so when you said that, I'm like, hmm, that got me thinking. Like, and we do all have the ability to heal ourselves. I don't care if you are on 20 different medications you, you know, you got diabetes, heart disease, whatever it is, you still have the ability to heal yourself. It's your body trying to tell you something. And you got to stop. If no excuses. Lazy. Some people I, are lazy. Yeah. And I just, when I get excuses, well, I have this, well, I have that. I just want to like roll my eyes. I'm like, yeah, I can't. <laughs> I don't, I don't feel with that well. And the first thing I say is, yeah, two years ago, I couldn't get out of bed. But Same, here I, I am. I've had that too. I've had all these. I things. get up and I'm, I, hardly ever have any pain anymore but I did the work mm -hmm. I did the work and yeah I'm kind of saying it kind of aggressively because I'm actually proud of myself because I never thought I'd get myself here I've dropped about 30 pounds mm -hmm. 25 30 pounds and I didn't do it because I was trying to lose weight I did it because I actually did shadow work because now my channels are starting to clear up and now the weight's just saying sayonara I no it, longer need to stay was here telling you something showing you something the minute you saw it it was not needed anymore and that's yeah. the thing too so what we have to look for too is like and I see this in the yoga room a lot people will be like my big toe hurts I can't do it and I'm like no you're avoiding the work I have a torn ligament in my left ankle right now I know right. it's a torn ligament it's torn and it hurts I, like a bitch. I still work out every, like five days a week. I practice with a broken sacrum. Like, I mean, that's a void. That's so when you find yourself saying, oh, I have knee issues. I can't do it. You are now that's escapism. You're yeah. taking something and saying, I can't heal myself because of this. Of course, we modify when there's an issue. Of course, there's modifications we take. Doesn't mean you stop working. You constantly, and this is something it's never ending guys. It's never ending. But when you start to find that power within yourself, when you start to actually transmute, you can feel it. And you start to realize how powerful and how special you are. And this is why, this is why they, the controllers did not wanted us to call things like Eastern philosophy, hubu jubu. You start it's, to feel like you're alive again. Yeah. Because they didn't want you to know how powerful you are. Right. So I guys, we're at like an hour and a half now. So I'm going to go are getting close to so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. I want to do a part two. Is that cool with you ladies? Let's I get wanna, Shanti on. Let's get Shanti on. I love on. Shanti on. I do. I love, uh, Shanti's the best. Shanti's just amazing. Um, I was supposed to film with Shanti today, guys, but uh, I think we're going to be doing that tomorrow because I got on with her and we started doing healing work ourselves. So that happens sometimes with Shanti. And so um, there were some things that I needed to talk through and work through with her because of everything going on with certain channels right now that, as I said earlier, I should feel vindicated, but it's just kind of re-triggering a lot of trauma for me. So anyway, that's the cycle of trauma though. So that's my shadow work right now. That's my work right now. This is coming up again. So I need to go through and do more healing. But anyway, any questions that you guys have regarding this, please put it in the comment section below. I want to thank both of you ladies for being very vulnerable. And me, especially what you told us because holy shit, like, and there's power and vulnerability. There's power in that. And so I always I told to no, that's not good. You don't want to uh -uh. speak what happened. To, and I want to validate you, both of you who are with me right now and validate everybody watching right now. Um, if something bad happened to you and you've been told to be quiet or to ignore it, I'm going to validate for you and be like, yeah, that happened to you. And it sucks. 
and you have permission from most importantly from yourself to cry and to mourn because that's when the healing starts. The tower moment is when the healing begins. And so if you need that validation, if you need someone to tell you, yeah, that was rough. I hear you. You got it from me. And I know you got it from them too. We see you. We see you. Yeah. See you. We see you. And that's being, being a human is really, really hard. And sometimes things happen to us and we can't control it, but we can control the way that we transmute it. When bad things happen to us, we can either go forward and do other bad things to other people, or we can decide to take that energy and being compassionate and be loving. Instead of punching someone, we could hug them and tell them it's okay. In the end, everything is okay. If it's not okay, it's not the end. And we all, we all are literally walking each other home hand in hand, except the people who do black magic. As I've said, they can walk the other direction. So they can't sit at our table. So <laughs> um, we, we don't play that game over here. We want to play in love and compassion, not harmful shit. So anyway, but we love you guys so, so, so much. I hope that helps people understand more of what shadow work is. Yes, it fucking sucks, but it's also very, very powerful too. So thank you ladies so much. Again, I'm going to be putting their contact information in the description box below a way to book with Stephanie as well as book with Emmy. Um, if you want to continue your, your healing journey, your journey with us and leave us questions and we'll get Shanti on next time. And we'll do a part two. Hell we could do a part three, part four, part five. We can just keep going with this until the floor. Yeah, if want. This can go on and on and on and on. Obviously we're at an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> we all, it makes you, I hope people are sitting at home feeling better about their life circumstances, especially with the R word. We all put our hand up <laughs> that, that, um, Oh, I guess I'm not alone. Right. I'm not, I'm not alone. No one has a perfect life. No and it's alone in perfection. No one's alone. Yeah. And if you feel, if you feel you're alone, you know, you have us validating and you also have this whole spiritual team. Maggie, behind Maggie you. just said, so Maggie just told me if you feel like you're alone, she always makes me cry. And you want to, you want to feel the presence of a hug. She told you just to stand and open your arms and open your heart up and ask her to come hug you. And she will. I had a couple of readings, by the way, who did that from a, a, a past video and they felt her presence. I forgot to tell you that, by the way. So, okay. it, yeah, it's a true thing. And that goes for if you have a passed on loved one, like my grandmother and my grandfather often come through. Yashua comes through. Maggie comes through now, too. Maggie's fierce. Yeah. Maggie's Magdalene, for those who don't know, her real name is Magdalene. Mary was not her. Magdalene, and she wants she likes to be called Maggie. So you can call her. If you call on Maggie, she knows. And she just she just showed me. She wants you to stand. Just stand in your house. Drop. Open your throat. Because the throat and the heart chakras are very connected. Open it up and just yeah. ask her to come. And she will come swaddle you up. Because we think of her as being this young, cute, fierce woman. But she was also a mom. She had five children. She was also a mother, too. So she knows how to love her babies. So. And we all have someone who loves us. Whether it's Magdalene. Spiritual <laughs> realm. Or or physical realm, it doesn't matter. So you can be no more vulnerable with the spirits though, because they watch you go yeah. to the bathroom too. So <laughs> I think of that, I'm like, wait, why are they watching me? When are they watching me? She literally certain... follows me everywhere. She, I feel her all the time. She, she's been following me around since I was 16. And there are times I'm going to be like, honey, I need to <laughs> You don't, I know you had a wild sex life with Yashua, but, <laughs> but wait until the christians find that one out anyway anyways, really anyways, anyways and these ladies know my connection to magdalene so it was pretty traumatizing to me for me to read about her sex life in the magdalene manuscript but anyway you don't need to be here for everything magdalene you don't need to watch me go to the bathroom so um as my 15 year old is walking in the room we'll end on that <laughs> <laughs> all right well i love you ladies and i love all you guys watching right now and chin up no we literally are right here with you even though we've all been separated we are energetically there and magdalene will come give you that great big hug if you need it so talk to you soon bye guys